With less moderate to severe eczema, why hide your skin if you can help heal your skin from within? Dupixent helps keep you one step ahead of eczema with clearer skin and less itch. Hide my skin? Not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixent. Tomorrow on ET, our Tori Spelling exclusive. Why she's talking family, love, and lies. If I don't own it, people are putting stuff out there that's way worse. Ooh. All right, before we go, Jimmy Fallon celebrated all things 80s on The Tonight Show. Yes. Our friend Debbie Gibson played with The Roots, and there were charade with Ralph Macchio, Leah Thompson, and Jennifer Beals. First word, I. Happening now. Get out of the car. A police officer is fired after shooting off several rounds at a McDonald's parking lot on Sunday. Coming up, we'll tell you what protocols SAPD's police chief says he violated. Families of victims and survivors of the Robb Elementary shooting are asking for changes to gun laws. What they're hoping changes specifically, coming up. Look to the skies tonight because Jupiter will be bright. I'll have your stargazing forecast and of course a look at the rest of your week coming up. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, a late night visit to McDonald's ends in a hail of gunfire. And the San Antonio police officer who fired those rounds is now out of a job. Those shots fired toward two teens in a car hitting one of the teens, 17-year-old Eric Cantu. Today, our first look at the body cam footage released by San Antonio police. But first, we want to warn you that you may find this video disturbing. Get out of the car. What? Our Jonathan Cotto spoke with San Antonio's police chief who says there were two violations when it came to police policy in this case. This video showing the moment a San Antonio police officer opened fire on two teenagers in a McDonald's parking lot on Sunday. Get out of the car. The driver, visibly surprised, has been identified as 17-year-old Eric Cantu. Police say this incident was not connected to the initial call. He was there for a, for a disturbance uh, at the McDonald's. Uh, he was distracted by a vehicle that he believed he saw the previous night and tried to stop, but it evaded. And then he decided to go over and approach that vehicle. As you can hear in this video, Officer James Brennan believed the car was stolen and called for backup. Hey, can you start me one more? I got a vehicle over here that uh, fled from me the other day. However, Brennan did not wait for backup, walked up to the vehicle, opened the door and told Cantu to get out. Get out of the car. After the car moved in reverse, Brennan opened fire. Brennan was placed on administrative duty following the shooting Tuesday. He was fired for violating the department's tactics and procedures. Well, it started with the tactics he used to approach the vehicle. That was number one. Number two, it was shooting at the vehicle, um, both at the very beginning of the, of the video and then later the second volley, but both against policy, shooting at, shooting at, uh, at vehicles unless it's in the ultimate uh, defense. Uh, of your life or someone else's. Brennan was a probationary officer who had just graduated the police academy and had been on the police force for seven months. McManus says he was qualified to patrol on his own. City manager Eric Walsh and the mayor weighing in on the incident, saying it's clear that the officer's actions were in violation of the training and tactics that officers use every single day, and says he supports the chief's decision. Mayor Ron Nurnberg adding the officer's actions ran counter to SAPD's mission and character, and says he is relieved quick action was taken by the chief to terminate Brennan. We are learning the victim was taken to an area hospital. We're told he is expected to be okay and his charges are pending. Reporting outside of public safety headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Chief McManus says after the homicide unit finishes its investigation, they will hand everything over to the district attorney who will determine if Brennan will be facing any charges. A hit and run crash mystery that killed a mom just a day before Mother's Day just had a major development. After five months, a suspect is now in custody, tracked down on Tuesday because of the big clue left behind at the scene. The suspect is 39 year old Christopher Sharp, who is now charged with deadly hit and run and evading arrest. Police say he ran a red light and hit 44 year old Jessica Harper's vehicle near Calabria Road and Alamo Downs Parkway. 
That's just about a mile from her house. Harper was taken to the hospital, but she later died of her injuries. Police say witnesses and an officer's dash cam captured Sharp running away from the scene. Investigators say the registration from the GMC Yukon left behind at the scene helped lead police to him. Records show a, a warrant for his arrest was issued on May 12th. Harper left behind a husband and two teenaged sons. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we're going to dive into the connection between mass shootings and domestic violence. Could be part of tomorrow's KSAT Community Virtual Town Hall. Our Courtney Friedman moderating tomorrow's discussion. It's in partnership with the Collaborative Commission on Domestic Violence. It's from 2 until 3 o'clock tomorrow. You can stream it on KSAT.com or our KSAT Plus streaming app on your smart TV. You can submit any questions you would like our panel to answer. Just head to KSAT.com and find this story. A passionate plea to prevent mass shootings. It's what families of the Rob Elementary victims and survivors met to discuss with elected officials who are Democrats this morning. Lee Waldman joins us live. Lee, an emotional press conference at the Civic Center, I'm told. Extremely emotional. Just four months ago, the Civic Center here behind me was the notification center for 21 families who got the worst news of their lives. It was later the place where they gave DNA so their loved ones could be identified after the Robb Elementary massacre. Today, this Civic Center stood as a place where those families gathered, demanding again for gun reform changes. Now, not every family of the 21 victims were here today. It's still too painful for some of them to return, but the ones we heard from directly spoke about how this tragedy could have been prevented. They were joined by elected Democratic leaders and some running for office this November. Survivors of the shooting also spoke. They're asking that the age to buy a semi-automatic assault style weapon be raised from 18 to 21, as well as enhancing background checks for people looking to purchase these guns. Fourth grade teacher and survivor from room 111, Arnufo Reyes, called on elected officials to make these changes happen and shared his experience from May 24th. The man said, if you're alive, please talk now. I was the only one that talked. We need you now more than ever. These families need you now more than ever. America needs you. Please don't act like this. His pleas were echoed by others hurting other hurting families in the room. In a statement from Governor Greg Abbott's office, his press secretary writes in part, quote, Federal courts have made clear that the Second Amendment prohibits raising the age to buy a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. Governor Abbott continues to work on solutions focused on the root of the problem, mental health, unquote. Now, Abbott's opponent, Beto O'Rourke, is challenging that stance on gun reform, saying that Florida's governor raised the age to purchase a semi raised the age to purchase a semi-automatic weapon from 18 to 21, just days after the Parkland shooting. Now, coming up at 6, you'll hear more from these families who say this shooting here in Uvalde could have been prevented. Live in Uvalde, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. The countdown continues ahead of the November election. You need to make sure you're registered to vote by October 11th so you can make your voice heard at the polls. That deadline a little more than five days away. The governor's race is just one of the major races that voters will be deciding. They'll also be deciding the next Bear County judge. It'll be the first time a new judge takes the seat for the county in more than 20 years. The two candidates, former County Commissioner Trish DeBerry and former Judge Peter Sakai, facing off in a forum hosted by the North San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. They took on the issues from the economy to problems at the Bear County Jail, each one also giving their vision of transportation in Bear County and the needed changes as the county's population continues to grow. One candidate even suggested building a third loop around the city. We can't become another Austin. We have to be looking at a third loop. Highway 46. I am going on record to commit to the IH35 corridor, the double decker. We're going to have to be sensitive to all that business community along that corridor. Also want to make sure that we have a commitment to finish out the 1604 loop. 
Now, this discussion eventually got to the topic of those controversial black, uh, rather dark money ads and the allegations that DeBerry made against Judge Sakai earlier this week. Our Erica Nadez was there for the whole exchange. She shares what each side had to say, and that's coming up on the News at 6. Take a look at traffic right now and we're at 281 in San Pedro and you can see traffic is slowing down, especially in the northbound lanes of 281. But traffic is at least moving and that's not a bad thing during rush hour on a Wednesday. President Joe Biden visiting hard hit Southwest Florida today after Hurricane Ian hit. Both he and the First Lady got a firsthand look at the damage in the area. Biden is promising more funding from the federal government for emergency response efforts. San Antonio Zoo, Fire Department and Utility making progress after Ian hit Florida. CPS Energy arrived in Florida last week. Today we've learned they helped fully restore power in Lakeland, Florida. It was their second stop in Florida after arriving in Jacksonville to help with power problems there. CPS Energy now confirms the 35 member crew expected back in San Antonio sometime tomorrow. And just south of Lakeland, the San Antonio Zoo crews in Punta Gorda, Florida, are actually helping a reptile zoo and conservation center there. New pictures shared on social media. The crew made up of several experts, including an electrician. They use chainsaws to remove large trees around the facility known as Iguana Land. Electric lines were repaired and several maintenance projects are now complete so Iguanaland staff can remain focused on their animals. And more San Antonians are on the job in Florida. The San Antonio Fire Department just sent another six crew members there to work in the Fort Myers region. A picture from the area shows a piece of that road just swept away. Part of the problem with relief efforts is the lack of cell service and power. So crews are having to use satellite phones to communicate. SAFD says two staffers are working as part of an emergency management team there and four others are working as engine crews to help respond to emergency calls. And another San Antonio in Fort Myers, our meteorologist Adam Kasky, who joined in the cleanup there well as well. He has family members who are trying to pick up the pieces of their home. Yeah, you may have actually been seeing some of his posts on his social media accounts just this morning. He walked us through what his in-laws came home to after the storm. Look closely. You can see the watermark is about waist high. You see it right there? Mm. And take a look at the damage left inside the home. We haven't touched anything. It's just everything's moved, you know? This is someone else, Mac. Hurricane moved it all. That's the room, this is the room we usually stay in. Uh, uh, mold already. Oh, the smell in here. Oh. That mold is the reason why Adam is wearing a mask, but as you can tell, it did nothing for the smell. Take a look at what was left in the front yard as well. The hurricane actually threw fish on shore, something Adam says is a common sight in this neighborhood. Probably doesn't help with the smell either. I'm telling you, I could smell it from here. Yeah, she's yeah. described as a former military medic and spy accused of luring migrants onto flights. Now the largest Latino civil rights organization stepping up its efforts to help find her. The search for Perla Huerta coming up next. Hey everybody, I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom. Here's what we're working on for you tonight at six o'clock. A late night deal to testify against his former boss, Michelle Barrientes Vela, halted by a judge. Coming up at six o'clock today, what stopped a former Precinct 2 captain from taking the stand in this trial? And a group of local artists are proudly showing their view of the West Side through a series of Loteria style paintings. What they're highlighting as part of their pride on the West Side. That and more coming your way today on the News at 6. I'll see you then. Thank you, Myra. Well, now to a case that began in Bear County, ended with migrants sent to the resort island of Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. A new reward being offered in the search for a woman accused of luring those migrants onto flights with false promises. The largest Latino civil rights organization in the nation increased its reward from $5,000 to $10,000. The president of the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC, says Perla Huerta must be caught. Where is Perla Huerta? We want to find out, and so does a grand jury in Bear County, and so do investigators, we believe, for the Department of Justice, as well as attorneys who are representing these refugees in civil causes of action. 
The flights from San Antonio to Massachusetts led the Bear County Sheriff to open up an investigation. We emailed the Sheriff's Office about LULAC's announcement today. We have not heard back yet. It used to be that when you bought milk, the choices were skim milk, 2%, whole milk. Now, cow milk shares the shelf with almond, oat, cashew milk, and about a dozen other choices. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It says that while those plant milks are popular, real dairy does have some real health benefits. Got milk? It was once a staple of the American diet. The perfect food for the young, the perfect food for the old. But is dairy for everybody? There are pros and cons to having dairy in your diet. Real dairy has a lot going for it because it's high in calcium, protein, and potassium. But it's also high in saturated fat, and some people can't tolerate it. Not all fats are created equal. Increasingly, studies have found that eating moderate amounts of full-fat dairy does not raise your risk of heart disease or stroke and may be beneficial. Drinking milk is linked to better bone health, especially in children. It can also reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. But if cow's milk just isn't your thing, nutritionists say yogurt is a great pick because it's packed with healthy probiotics. But be wary of flavored yogurts, which can be high in added sugars, and that can offset the health benefits. She says choose a yogurt with six grams or less of added sugars. A daily serving of yogurt and one of cheese is enough for general health. Some cheeses, such as cheddar and mozzarella, have probiotics, too. Food for thought before putting dairy out to pasture. And as long as you keep drinking it, I'll keep giving it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a live look outside with live cam right now. It's 88 degrees as we look towards downtown San Antonio. Still a beautiful day. It's always nice to end the day with a high in the 80s. Oh my goodness, I know, especially after this brutal summer heat that we were dealing with. But do got to remind you, it is still pretty dry out there. Let's take a look outside. Right now, you can see just a couple of puffy cumulus clouds there, but they're already starting to thin out. The high temperature today, 88 degrees. That's a preliminary high. Take a look at that. Our morning low was 60. We saw temperatures rise by 28 degrees from the start of the day to the afternoon. The reason for that, dry air. Dry air heats up and cools down quickly. Uh, and so we were cool in the morning and we're comfortable here this afternoon. Now I want you to look to the sky tonight because Jupiter once again will be bright out there. Now it's going to rise shortly before sunset in the east horizon at 645 and set early tomorrow morning at 646 in the morning in the western horizon. So just just tonight after sunset, look in the eastern sky. You'll get a nice view of Jupiter. It's going to be big and bright. We're going to have light winds, mostly clear skies. Temperatures are going to fall into the low 70s by midnight. All in all, a pretty pleasant evening. Then early tomorrow morning, just a couple of degrees warmer than what we saw this morning. We'll be looking at 62 in San Antonio, 62 in New Braunfels, upper 50s up in the hill country, 64 in Del Rio, 64 in Eagle Pass, and 62 in Carrizo Springs. A little bit closer around the San Antonio metro area in your neighborhood in New Braunfels. It'll be 62, 60 in Canyon Lake and 60 in Yavaldi. Tomorrow we'll start off with mostly clear skies. Temperatures will be warming up into the mid 70s by about the mid morning hours and then throughout the day tomorrow you'll know an increasing amount of those cirrus clouds will be out there. 82 around noon and in the afternoon we'll top off at 90. So just a couple of degrees warmer than today. Not a major difference for us other than those clouds increasing in the later evening hours too. All right, when we look at the satellite and radar across the state of Texas, you can see very clearly across the panhandle and parts of West Texas, we're getting some rainfall out there. Uh, this is all associated with the trough of low pressure. It looks uh, almost like it's tempting us, right? But it's just not going to be making it to San Antonio, unfortunately. In fact, it's actually going to move to the south. And what we'll see over the next couple of days is continuing to see some cirrus clouds working in from the southwest across Mexico. By Friday, there could be some showers in the Rio Grande Valley. And so for that reason, there is a very small off chance, 10% 
for a stray shower in San Antonio Friday and Saturday, but that's about the best that we can do, unfortunately. Otherwise, we're going to keep the status quo cool mornings and comfortable afternoons, although those mornings will be getting slightly warmer. Coming up at six, we've got more footage from Adam Kasky out there helping his in-laws in uh, Fort Myers. Just devastating to see the damage that Hurricane Ian has left behind. And I'll take a look at the tropics. Well, you know, we could use some rain out of the tropics despite all of that devastation we're seeing. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Is he going to play or not? Well, if you had to make the call today, the answer yeah. would be no. And it looks like just as we go along, it's less and less likely he will play. We're talking about Dak Prescott, who was at practice today, but not in a full workout capacity. And we'll have an update on that. And what do the Texans think about being booed by their own fans at home? Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys returned to practice today to get ready for the Rams in Los Angeles on Sunday, and Cooper Rush worked with the first team today. That's because Dak Prescott is not ready to return just yet. And Coach Mike McCarthy confirmed me today what Jerry Jones told us yesterday, that Prescott is still not able to grip the ball firmly enough following surgery on his fractured right thumb following the first game of the season. Dak Prescott, well, he'll be in the rehab group today. Um, you know, until he had a good visit with the doctor yesterday. So the next step is to get enough strength um, in the hand to, to throw the football. So uh, he will work exclusively uh, with Britt Brown today. And Brown is a Cowboys trainer. In some related Cowboys news, Cole Beasley has decided to retire from the NFL today. His agent making the announcement after 11 seasons in the NFL, seven with the Dallas Cowboys, and most recently, Tampa Bay. While the Cowboys can rely on Cooper Rush, the Texans are struggling with Davis Mills at quarterback. Right now, Mills ranks 22nd in the NFL in completion percentage, 19th in passing yards, and 29th in quarterback ratings. The poor performance by the offense, especially at the start of the games, is drawing boos from Texan fans at home. How does Mills' teammates feel about hearing boos from their own fans? This is horrible, right? I mean, but, you know, that's, uh, that's just part of the game. You know, you go everywhere. Every team, we were in Denver, they were booing their offense, you know, so it's like, it's that's just part of it. You, we can't really let um, that dictate how we feel or whatever. We got to just continue um, to do our job. We'll see if they can pick up their first win of the season when the Texans travel to Jacksonville for a noon kickoff on Sunday. Our San Antonio Spurs have had back-to-back -back long practices following their blowout 134-96 loss to the Rockets in Houston on Sunday night in their preseason opener. Trey Jones, who is making a bid to become the Spurs' new starting point guard with the departure of DeJounte Murray, summed up the team's performance and now their reaction. Just worrying about the things we can control right now. Um, you know, playing harder, playing more physical uh, on the defensive end for sure, trying to continue to get into the paint on the offensive end, put pressure on the rim, and then you know, get easy shots. Uh, we didn't shoot it well, so you know, that never helps. Um, but you know, it was the first preseason game. Uh, we're in here working hard today, uh, trying to learn, uh, trying to build on everything. And uh, we'll continue to build throughout the preseason and be ready for the first game. All right, their next preseason game is their home opener tomorrow when they host the Orlando Magic at 7. And coming up at 6 o'clock, how UTSA is enjoying great success with their offense going into their next game. Absolutely. Frank mm -hmm. Harris. Yeah, big part of that, yes. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Tomorrow morning will likely be the coolest morning over the next several days, but really we're only talking about a couple of degrees here. By the weekend, morning lows will be in the upper 60s. And as far as high temperatures go, right near 90 degrees. If you want to wish really hard for rain Friday and Saturday, there's a 10% chance, but again, odds of rainfall are not in your favor. If you want to wish really hard, you could try. Those are the days. You can always try. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. See you back here at 6 World News Up next.